at this, I was just like, why you gonna text again? Oh, I'm so mad. Oh. Hey, Key Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for clicking on this video because I know you're interested in what I have to say today. If you haven't done so already, I'm gonna need you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below to become a part of the Key Hi and hello to my subscribers. Thank you so much for joining and let's get right into today's video. Okay, so today I'm gonna be talking about the National Marriage and Family Therapy licensing exam. Now, I know a couple of people have watched my graduate school series and I will link that up here at the top so you all can watch that if you haven't. And a couple of people have decided to go into the field of marriage family therapy, which I am excited about. Yay, it's a great field to get into. It's challenging, but it's definitely rewarding. Now, on your path to becoming a licensed marriage family therapist, there is this big test that you have to take in order to begin to get the requirements necessary to get full licensure. Now here on YouTube, I haven't seen a lot of videos about the exam at all. So I figured why not, you know, I'd be the first to tell you about this, that monster of an exam. So if you're interested, keep on watching. You go into your MFT program if you decide to go into the field. There's this test that everybody talks about is pretty much the culmination of the two or three years or however long your program is of marriage family therapy and at the end of your program once you have your degree conferred you have the option to go ahead and take the national licensing exam this exam is accepted in every state except california california has their own exam because california is like their own entity now what i did when i graduated is that i waited um, maybe about almost almost a year before I took the exam because I just wanted a break from school first of all second I wanted time to study and a couple other my cohort members were taking the exam too so I wanted to get a feel of what the exam might be like by asking them questions January I signed up to take the exam now I live in North Carolina so the way it's set up here is that you can't begin accruing post-grad clinical hours until you pass the exam and get the associate part, the associate certificate. So I applied for the exam in January, February, I got the notification that I was approved and I got the licensing, um, the number to apply for the actual exam. Once I got that number, I went to the exam service. There's a, like a national exam service that AMFT is under that you go to apply for the exam. Now, the exam itself costs $350. Yes, $350 for this exam. Now, at that time, when you go actually go to apply for exam, which I applied in March, you don't pick your test date that day. But the test dates are the third week of every month, Monday through Saturday, I believe. Six weeks before the exam, you get another email saying that, Okay, you've been approved. Now you can pick your testing center and your testing date and time. So six weeks before the exam, I picked my test date and I picked it near the end of the window. I recommend picking the date towards the end of the window because you have about three or four weeks before you get the actual test results. So if you take it closer to the end, you're not waiting as long. I was studying, you know, I was studying here and there, but I wasn't really like, Oh, I got I got the study y'all like cuz I didn't have like the date in mind so once I had that date I was like oh yes got to study so six to eight weeks before the exam I really just study this exam now if you want a video about how I study or the program I used I'll do another separate video cuz this one might be a little long so I know you got things to do so the day of the exam came and you know I had my little snacks I had like some water I had some banana you know to kind of get my energy up get that little sugar rush real quick because the exam is really long and i went to the exam center and the dude was like yeah you can't have your coat you can't have your sunglasses you can't have your car keys you can water you can't have you no know, bananas i was like oh darn it i'm about to be hungry exam is a 200 question exam you have four hours to do it 50 percent reasoning 
And then the other half is kind of like you really paid attention to grad school and you've dealt with clients and things, then you know, you got it. But that is kind of how the exam is set up. And I will show you my score because I did not pass by only 16 points, but I'm gonna show you my score. So hold on. And during the exam, I felt like I was failing, but the program that I used to study said that when you're taking the exam, it's going to feel like you're not passing. And that's how I feel. Like I was just super tired because I have no bananas or water, so I was thirsty and I was tired. So you get the letter about three weeks post exam um, that tells you your score. So when I got this letter, I was like, oh, these are the results. <sighs> Read. Open the letter and it says, Dear Kier Ivory, we regret to inform you that you did not achieve a passing score on the national examination with a score of 128 of 200. And then it tells you, you know, the release date and then it says status fail. I saw this, I was just, I was sad. I was really sad. I was like, I gotta take this thing again. I don't wanna take it again. So the passing score, the exam is a 144. So you need a 144 out of 200 to pass the exam. And the way they break it down, break down a test in these categories and then they show you how you did okay so these asterisks right here these three asterisks are the areas that I could have could have done better in and the ones that have these these scores without asterisks I did pretty good in those areas so the areas of the exam are the practice of systemic therapy assessing hypothesizing and diagnosing designing and conducting treatment evaluating ongoing process managing crisis situations and maintaining ethical, legal, and professional standards. So I got a 128 out of 144. I missed the passing score by 16 points. 16! Mind you, every question on the exam is worth one point. There are super, super hard questions. There are questions that are like, oh yeah, I know this. And there are questions that you have to kind of think about. But once you think about it and work through it, you got it. I got this, I was just like, why I'm text again? Oh, I'm so bad. Oh, I studied for hours. I talked to friends. People were taking it before. Multiple books. And I was just like, what? If you would like a full video about like the setup of the exam, I can do that. This video is already long already. There's six different areas they test you in. Every exam is different. So my exam had a lot of genograms, a lot of what would you do if the client liked you type of thing. Um, ethics is a big thing on the exam. And I was tired. Like my brain got tired maybe about 90 minutes in. Oh, my brain was like, mm, it's nap time. This exam was not easy at all. Like I'm not gonna lie to you, it was hard. It is hard, but once you pass, you don't have to ever take it again. So that's great. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see y'all next video. Bye.